Everybody like, gets is so happy. It's amazing when the weather changes. Yeah. <laughs> so, do I have anything on my face? Because no. I have my Kleenex and my nose has been running. I'm like, oh, sometimes it leaves little white things no, on my I face. So, okay, that. good. I'll let you know. But Thank you. Morning. There you go. <laughs> I think we go. Let's go. Say we're ready to start. Oh, it says 119 now. Okay. They bumped it back a little bit. Yeah. Does everyone just eat? Yeah. Hello. Good morning. Come on in, find your seats. We're going to be getting started in a little less than a minute. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. Who is worthy to be praised? Who is worthy to be praised? So shall I be saved so from my I enemies. Be saved from my enemies. And know the Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. And know the Lord liveth. And blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Oh, magnify the Lord, magnify the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. Who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved, so shall my life be saved from my enemies. You know the Lord liveth. And blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Let us praise the Lord of Lords. Let us praise the Lord of Lords. Praise Him now and evermore. Praise Him now and evermore. Praise the Father, Son, praise and the, the Spirit. Father, Son, Blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. You know the Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. You know the Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of my salvation be exalted. You know the Lord liveth. And blessed be the 
rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, family. It's great to be able to come together and worship in Psalms. 107 in verse 1, a passage of scripture to encourage you this morning. The psalmist writes, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed, the saved of the Lord say this Those he has redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he has gathered from the lands, from the east and the west, the north and the south, from all over the springs and even the great state of Kansas. Some have wandered in the desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry, they were thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they made the best choice. They cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle So let the redeemed give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for us. For he satisfies the thirsty, he fills the hungry with good things. That's why we're here together today, amen. We are here to to rejoice, to celebrate, to lift up and worship all of the good things that God is doing right now. But even more importantly, what God is going to continue to do once you leave this building this morning. And we just need to be reminded of that, to be encouraged and empowered to walk in the Spirit of God. Amen? Amen. So we're really grateful to have all of you here today. I I do have to welcome, though, I don't have to, I want to. Where are they? Ken and Esther Long are some good friends of ours from L.A. They're in Kansas now, and and, uh, really great to have you here with us. Thank you for your love and friendship with the Scales. And uh, we're just a big family from all over the United States. Amen? So let's uh, bow together. Let's pray. And uh, we'll continue to sing and worship God together. Let's bow and pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that in our distress, Father, when we could find no satisfaction from the things of this world, we hungered, we were thirsty, we were tired, we were worn out. And when trouble became more than we could bear, Father, we looked to you and we know that it was because of your grace. We know it was because of your intervention and your power, Father, that we as a redeemed people can just be here this morning Father, not uh, in perfection, but a desire to be perfect as you are. But, Father, we are profoundly grateful for your work in our lives. Thank you for this gathering. Thank you for this family. Father, not only in the Colorado Springs, but from Denver to Kansas, from all over the United States and around the world. Father, as your dearly loved children, we lift up our hearts here to worship. But I pray beyond human ability that your Holy Spirit, Father, will move and transform the minds and the hearts of your people today as we dive into why we really are in desperate need of your spirit. Please lead us today, Father. We thank you for your kindness. We love you, Father, and all of God's people said together. Amen. All right, let's stand for some more songs. We're having a mostly a cappella service today. We're going to be singing some songs that... uh, you may not have heard in a long time or may just know really well or may have never heard. But we're going to be singing these songs and we're going to be just worshiping God uh, with with all our hearts today. And I just want to encourage everybody, we're up here singing. uh, We're technically the worship leaders, but everybody out here is also a worship leader. You get to lead right from where you are. So it's really an awesome thing we can do. So this song that we're going to sing is called We Praise Thee, O God. We praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and has now gone above. Hallelujah, Thine the glory. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise Thee, O God, for the Spirit of light. Who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, thine the glory. 
Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again. All glory and praise to the God of all grace, who has bought us and sought us and guided our ways. Hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us again, revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love, may each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, Revive us again. Amen. All right, next song is How Majestic Is Your Name. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O oh Lord, we praise your name. O oh Lord, we magnify your name. Prince of peace, mighty God, O oh Lord, God Almighty. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O oh Lord, we praise your name. O oh Lord, we magnify your name. into our time of communion today, we're going to sing It Is Well With My Soul. Oh, 
All right, good morning, church. My name is Alex, and this is my beautiful wife, Anna. And we have the privilege of leading your hearts and minds, and our hearts and minds, in communion this morning. Now, I want to start off by sharing to you guys what communion has meant to me most of my life uh, growing up. So I grew up in a Baptist church, uh, and and in a Baptist church, only those who are baptized can can partake in communion. And so needless to say, as a nine-year-old, watching trays of grape juice and crackers go by is quite tempting to say, hey, maybe I should get baptized and I can get the kind of mid-church snack. Uh, (laughs) Subsequently, a few years later, I got baptized, but honestly, looking back, I don't think I fully understood my decision to get baptized and what it truly meant. I would eventually get baptized in the campus ministry at Purdue, and yes, I'm still a little bit salty about that that loss last week. (laughs) Um, it's, it's all right. It's all right, though. Um, but this time I was fully aware of the decision and the covenant I was making with God through Jesus' sacrifice. Though the two dunks are rolled apart, one aspect in the practice of communion remained kind of the same for me. I would take the small cracker, the small cup of juice, remain quiet and somber, and reflect on the sacrifice of Jesus. But what if communion is something a little bit more? I was prompted by the Spirit to look back at several sermons on the topic, uh, topic of communion by one of my favorite preachers and authors, John Mark Comer. So some of what I share I've gleaned from some of his sermons, in case that might sound some, sort of familiar. Uh, but what I want to do right now is let's get into the Bible. Let's take a look at, look at Luke chapter 22, starting in verse 14. And so again, starting in verse 14 in Luke chapter 22, it says, When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, 